episode two of our pro gaming, esports, uh, competitive gaming, MOBA gaming, and we'll eventually get to fighters and shooters as well, training series with our League of Legends focus and our, our sensei, our dojo master, our, uh, if you guys have been watching Daredevil, our stick, the guy that beats the crap out of us and tells us what to do, Locktran. Uh, Locktran uh, is here to tell us what is going on. Lock, how you doing, man? Good, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. How, how, what have you been getting up to since our last episode? Uh, I've been playing some games, going to school, that's pretty much it. Are you getting on to the end of your semester, man? Uh, yeah, there's about a month left, so that's pretty Ooh. cool. That's, that is, that is still, that is a long stretch. That is a long stretch. Uh, so what have you been, uh, what have you been playing besides this? I know you've been digging into some Heroes of the Storm. Are you, uh, are you interested to see how the game takes shape once it, like, officially leaves beta in about a month, month and a half? Yeah, I'll be interested in seeing how many people, like, stick with it and, like, uh, come on to it, but, uh, I Gameplay wise, I don't think it's gonna change much from now until then. Yeah, what's what's the scuttlebutt amongst uh, players? I mean, besides the fact that none of them are saying the word scuttlebutt. No one says that. No one says that. No one says what's scuttlebutt. That even mean? No one knows what that means. Don't worry about it, Jess. It's a it's like a butt that walks like a crab, and that's why you know because that because that's what rumors sound like. They sound like butts that walk like crabs, right? What? Yeah, I'm, I'm just struggling, There is Jess. something in this game called a scuttlecrab. <laughs> Wait, really? No joke, yeah. <laughs> I thought that was what you were referring to. Yeah, I know, I thought it was, I thought it was a joke, and then I was like, no, he's just being silly. <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a happy accident, and we're all yeah. about happy accidents here. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Locke, what do, what do you think, what do you think people are, 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 are your friends, are your co-competitors in the League of Legends world, like, excited about the new flood of players that are going to come in or uh yeah more players is always good but um the competitive scene's pretty good right now i think yeah, yeah you were you were saying on the last episode that it's it's already very much fully formed and and there are there are people like sort of staking out their claims in that world at this point yeah. right yeah jess how are you doing are you ready? Are you ready to? So last on the last episode of Training Day, mm -hmm. we covered a lot of basics. We mm -hmm. covered we covered a whole lot about what MOBAs are, what multiplayer online battle arena games are. I I have had to spell that out more times in the past couple of weeks than I think anybody who actually plays MOBAs regularly ever does. Yeah. Uh. But yeah, and and uh, Shafa Cool, good evening to you as well. Hello, everybody who good is evening. who is hanging out in the chat here at the top of the show. Jess, are you are you ready to actually play against <laughs> real human beings? Because you and Locke, you and Locke, you know, did okay against bots last time. Did okay, did okay. I did okay. Locke was just wrecking. So you know, that's, I was that's doing the point okay. Was <laughs> you're, yeah. yeah, Locke, you were doing you were, you were acquitting yourself well. You're all right, Locke. I mean, Decent, I decently okay. You were de you were you were I would say demonstrating your your expert level skills with a plum. Mm -hmm. So if if you guys have not picked up yeah. on on what we're laying down here uh, today, as opposed to last episode, we are actually going to play some actual matches. We are going mm -hmm. to go play with real human beings. And uh, Locke and Jess are going to do their goddamnedest to to triumph. Uh, so Locke, walk me through the process. You sit down at your computer, and you are going to go into your very first League of Legends match ever. What is that process for you? The process of starting a game. <laughs> you press play. You press play. You click on the icon. You open it. You press power. No. What are what are the things that you need to do 
when you're in a sit down and you're actually going to play your first match besides opening the client, opening an account for League of Legends, what are what are what is the process? How do you go in? Give me give me a step by step. Okay. Of going in and so, figuring things out. Once you log in the client, you can press well, you can check what champions are free this week if you want. And then you just look at your profile and you click available and then... No, cl clarify that for me. What do you mean what champions are available this week? So League of Legends is a free-to-play game, as most of you guys know. And the, ma the way they make money is... Well, either you can buy champions by playing games, but they also have free champions that you can use every week and it changes. So you can play those champions and then grind up influence points, which you can use to buy the other champions you want to play. But also you can buy them with riot points, which is their currency, kind of like MS points and stuff like that. You have to use your money and buy riot points and then use the riot points to buy champions and skins and stuff. Why can't they just say money? Just say yeah. riot points. Just say money. Riot points. Put a dollar sign next to it. More, more money for them because then you have situations where you have 422 riot points left and you can't buy anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a casino. You use you use uh, chips instead of money, so people think they're not actually spending money. Yeah, the champions you can are totally like, spend real money in League of Legends. They're like heroes in Dota. They're called champions in this game. I R Jeeves. <laughs> so also, <laughs> you press play, and then there's all the modes for you. Um, then there's different maps. That's pretty much it. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. You, you should be able to figure it out pretty easily. And then once you're, if you press party, you can start inviting people off your friends list. Either wait, are you in queue? Uh, I pressed accept. Oh, uh, can you leave the I queue? I just pressed. Then I'll invite you. Cause I was oh, are you not? Yeah, 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 I left the queue. Oops. Uh oh. Okay. Well, that's not good. That's awkward. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait. So why is that? I have not to get good? out of here then. Uh, so basically, yes. like in a recent patch, they changed it. So like, if the lobby leader leaves the lobby. Because I left the lobby to show the process of starting the game. Yeah. Like, the leadership will be transferred to the other people in the lobby instead of booting everybody out like it used to. So, yeah. I had to sign back in. I may have a time Yeah, that's okay. Time Don't penalty. worry about it. it okay. might be like, wait, wait. What is the time penalty? Okay, so basically, if you get into champion slack, which is like your team's already like formed and everyone accepted the invite, if you, like leave during the champion select then you get a five minute penalty and then it becomes like 15 30 or one hour two hour like it consecutive leaves for the same day and that's to punish people who like just dodge when you know like uh they leave the queue when they don't get the champion they want or stuff like that man so, so we have to wait five minutes now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well that's fine that's fine i think i like i i am a big believer that a lot of this basic stuff, you know, like Locke, you just said it's pretty basic and people can figure it out. And there are a lot of people who can't like, you know, like I, I, for my part, I remember the first time I ever played World of Warcraft, you know, That's I've been a good playing, game. Yeah, good game. And that was like 2004. I've been playing games for 20 freaking years at that point, And I still had to like talk to a friend and be like, all right, what are some of the things that I am even freaking looking at here? Like, what do I need to think about in, you know, what kind of character that I'm going to select, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So, you know, right there, you were talking about uh, what champions are available when you first get in there. Uh, so what champions are, are the champions that are free at any given time uh, well suited to beginners? Um, usually true? they try to put in like one or two characters that are easy, and then the other ones you just rotate it, rotate them based on roles. Mm -hmm. So you know, there's a few melee characters, there's a few ranged characters, and there's a few caster characters and like support characters every rotation usually. Got it. So you you and I talked about this during our first episode. Uh, but I think I think it's also worth doing a little bit of a refresher. If you were, you know, sitting down with somebody who had never, ever, ever, ever played League of Legends before in their entire life, what role do you think is good for them to sort of cut their teeth on? 
Um, well, a lot of people like try to teach their friends that in my experience and they like put them on support but yeah i think that's a pretty big mistake because uh supporting is like a pretty different kind of like play because yeah. when you're supporting you're not supposed to take any creep kills and then every other roller is supposed to take creep kills so if you like start learning support and like you play support all the way into level 30 and then you try playing something else like you're it's not going to transfer over well. I mean, you'll know like how to like team fight and stuff, but the laning is a lot different. So, um, I'd recommend so to, cl to uh, clarify for anybody who's hanging out in the chat and is an absolute beginner. You know, uh, IR Jeeves is saying, you know, I appreciate taking these five minutes to educate. Uh, when you when you're talking about how a support class isn't going to be taking any creep kills, the creeps are the the minions the non-player, you know, characters that you can kill and attack and you need to harvest resources from in the lanes when you are playing an actual match. And, I, I, you know, just as an outsider luck, it sounds to me like if you were going to go in and you'd never played this before, like, support sounds terrible because, I, like, I know me, my first impulse would be to go right after Yeah, the you want to kill stuff, right? <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, and that's good to practice, especially when yeah. you're learning. You should know how to kill stuff, yeah. Um, besides that, I think people should stay away from jungling, too, because jungling isn't very efficient until uh, your team knows what they're doing. So at the beginning, when you're starting, you're playing with people at your level most of the time. Like, there's sometimes people who smurf and stuff, and that's whatever. And then um, you also don't have the runes or masteries to jungle efficiently, so you will get killed in the jungle a lot mm -hmm. because as you progress as a summoner level like that's your account level uh the cap is 30 uh you get more power pretty much so yeah. once once you hit 30 then that's the ideal time to start jungling do you have any runes or anything accessible to you when you start up for the first time uh unfortunately you don't but uh they unlock rune slots every time you level and also give you mastery points um and also I haven't built mine at all yeah. Yeah. the runes, we can go to the shop here and then you go to runes yeah. so basically there's three tiers right um, you can't use tier 3 until you're level 20 or up and also tier 3 costs a lot of influence points compared to like tier 1 especially tier 3 we can just look at an average rune like this yellow rune right here it costs 410 influence points but if you go to tier one, it costs let's see, like five. Hmm. But it's a lot weaker, so it's for people who are low level and want runes, and that's a nice way of doing it, I guess. But um, basically, Riot's idea is they're well. First, the main problem with free-to-play games like back then was that. All of them basically had the model of paying for power, right? And no one, right, no one liked right. that stuff. So these runes you can't ever buy with money, but um, they encourage you to buy boosts, like IP boosts, so you can, you know, get more. You double the IP for every game Locked you play. For a second, I thought you said they encourage you to buy booze. Oh. I was like, this is a totally different game. <laughs> I, this is a totally different thing than I thought it was. Welcome to League of Legends. Don't start with support. Don't start with jungling. But do start with bourbon. Booze. It's a good strategy. <laughs> Jess, what, so what do you have of so these rooms and everything that, that Locke is describing here? Yeah, I'm looking at my mastery page now, actually. Um, and so I have, I have my little uh, armchair companion here. My boyfriend is kind of helping me, too. Um, He'll be silently pointing me to the in the right direction, um, but he. So yeah, I have what like six points for my masteries that I'm just kind of spreading yeah, across pretty, my offense yeah. and defense right now, um, because I'm only level six. Um, but so I have nothing basically. I'm a little underpowered. So should we lane uh, together? Fortune, I want to. I want to play Miss Fortune. I'll Real turn quick. my. My volume down too. All right, you want to play? Okay, why do you want to play Misfortune there, Jess? I just really like her character. I'm doing it. 
um i i like her she's so she's a pirate but she's like this um like sexy pinup style pirate i really just like the look of her everything you just said appeals to me everything yeah, absolutely. <laughs> she has Cross an skin too and she's awesome looking so yeah uh, so there were you pins here in the chat has been has been talking about uh, some char characters uh, that are good for support and other roles. And Locke, you pin says that Trinda, I think I'm pronouncing that right, Trinda. Trindamir. Yeah, Trindamir, sure Trindamir. is uh, is the easiest character to to cut your teeth on. Is that accurate? Um, I'm not sure actually. He is a pretty simple character, but I don't know. It's uh, his mechanics are a lot different based on, I mean, compared to the other characters because his resource isn't mana. So I think you should start with the mana champion first of all because that will get you familiar with a majority of the cast. Mhm. Mm That's one problem I have, especially when I'm playing mana champions. I run out of mana all the time because I just don't. No. Yeah, probably. Like, I forget that I yeah. have to conserve mana yeah. for my abilities and stuff. Jess always forgetting to conserve mana. So, mm -hmm. are, are you guys are setting up your team here. Uh, Locke, who are you guys playing with? Who? What are these other people in the queue with you and Jess? Uh, who, what are the characters they've picked? Who are they? Uh, we have a LeBlanc, which is a mid laner. She plays a caster. Oh, she's like a assassin, kind of. She uses her spells to kill people, and then we have a Maokai, which is like a tanky tree. He goes top, and then we have a Nautilus support, which is just a tanky guy with a big anchor. Yeah, and then you are Rengar. Yeah. And he, so, so you're a jungle role this time, yeah? Yeah, all the other roles are taken, so. Looks like it. Jungle. Unless Nautilus went jungle, but yeah. that doesn't happen often. So, right. Locke, my, my other question is, I mean, you obviously, you play with a team. You play with San Jose State University's Click Away team. Yes, sir. And uh, you guys kick some ass. You guys are known for kicking some ass, correct? Yep. I mean... <laughs> very... Glorified ass kickers. Yep. <laughs> just, just utter modesty, man. I well, like I, I don't actually, I don't know how I would respond if somebody says you kick some ass. I would be like, I am known to kick an ass here and there. Um, I kick but, ass when I wake up and before I go to bed. That's right. <laughs> everything. I'm all out of gum. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> everything in between is just hanging out. Uh, but so, you know, usually you're playing with people you know. You're playing, you're playing with a team. For somebody that's brand new to the game, they might be coming to this, you know, all on their own. They're they're just sort of like looking for something to do. And how do you make it clear to people that you're playing with randomly, you know, that you want to play a certain role? Like you obviously went straight for a jungler because you prefer to jungle. That's your thing. That's and that's that's the role you play for your team as well. But is there a way to signify to other players if you're not, you know, if you're not, if you don't know them? Uh, say, unfortunately, I, I the priority for this as a normal like blind pick, so there's no drafting. Uh, mm -hmm. It's pretty much, you know, the common courtesy is whoever types it first gets it, and then there's also people who just like pick it and then lock it in, so like you can't do anything other than deal with it. But that's rude. Yeah, but, you know, it's the internet. It's not the first time someone's heard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm actually, like, I, that's one of the big questions I have. You know, it seems like you and Jess have really not had any sort of problem uh, getting in here and, and meeting up with folks and just sort having of... Having a nice sort of, game. Yeah, having a nice game. What are the big etiquette rules if somebody's coming into this for the absolute first time, they've never played League of Legends, what should they keep in mind as far as etiquette goes? Um, you know, there's just basic manners. Like, don't curse teammates for feeding and stuff. But since everyone's, like, a beginner, then you don't have to worry about it that much. Hey, you guys can leave now. Okay. Thank you. Know, getting out. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. So this is this is going to be interesting too because I guess we'll see. Last time we had bots, so there wasn't any like real trash talk. <laughs> yeah, that's happening. what I was about to say too. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes, man. Well, yeah. Okay. So you know, Locke, you're saying don't curse out your teammates. Don't you know? Don't start being like, "Hey, you mother." You know, yeah. really getting <laughs> as as IRGs puts it, etiquette rule number one: don't be a dick. Uh, so, with that said, is there anything like should you be deferring to what other characters are telling you to do? Uh, you know how how do you ensure that you're trying to be a good teammate right out the gate? Um, just make sure. Like at when you st when you're first starting off, like line lanes don't matter that much. So like if someone's just gonna take the lane you wanted to go in, I would suggest just letting them because arguing is like pointless with people. Like especially at the beginning, like it doesn't really matter. You can win going anywhere starting from the beginning, and then you know just don't don't be a dick like you said. <laughs> it usually works out. <laughs> if they're a dick, then you know it's whatever. I'm a dick, you're a dick, you know what happens. It's is funny. there is there a system in place for, you know, if somebody really gives you a hard time to the point that you can't just shrug it off, is there is there a system for, you know... Yeah, there's actually a few good ones. So the first one is, um, you know, most games you have to type slash ignore and then space and then type the name in, but in this game... You can just open up the scoreboard by holding tab and then just clicking any of the sculch buttons that are next to their character. Which are right there. And then also at the end of the game, Riot has a really good reporting system, so you can there's like a lot of categories that you can report them for. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> a lot of people are dicks, so they have a <laughs> bunch of categories and there's also a tribunal. Um which any user can go on to and review cases and then see if it's a good report or like a, a salty report, you know, like he didn't actually do anything bad, but he reported him anyway, and then you can uh, choose the verdict and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Jess, when you started playing League of Legends, your, your boyfriend got you into it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so yeah. You, you weren't playing before you guys were dating. I wasn't playing, no. Um, I knew, you know, I knew what it was, I was up, but uh, I, I didn't really right. understand the game. You didn't understand it. But yeah, and now it's like, yeah, it's like watching football on Sunday nights is we watch League of Legends. Did you, did you guys, did you run into any problems? Like, was there anything that you, did you commit any faux pas when you started playing? Uh, aside from sucking, I don't know, yeah. I'm really competitive, it's, so it's hard for me to play with people I love, because I'll get mad at them for telling me what to do, <laughs> even when I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, but no, no, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm just still learning, and that's, that's the curve that happens. I'm not too worried about it anymore. Now, last time we played, it had been months and months and months and months yeah. since you had played the game at all. And now it's only been a couple of weeks. Right. Are you feeling a little bit more confident? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because like every time you start playing in a different character, and especially like now that I'm I'm just learning, I really don't know. Like every new character I start, I have to learn all over again. Yeah. And especially each role I'm playing is a totally different role. So, so you know, support is easier. But in terms of learning the game, it's, yeah, like, Locke, you're right, it's really not the best way to learn, um, because you are, you know, you're playing completely differently than, than any other, really, any other role. You're not killing things. So, um, I do like support, actually. Like, I like supporting my, my boyfriend, which, oh, sounds really sweet. But, yeah. But, yeah, uh, but, but, but I'm still, that's yeah, I'm getting also, the hang of this. That's a person who you know and you guys can communicate with each other very easily, there's a rhythm there where if he needs you to play a certain way, you can trust him to tell you that, whereas if you're just jumping in and you're playing with a bunch of randos and you're trying to be a support class and you really don't know what you're doing, that's, that's much more difficult. And then everyone yells at you and calls you names and it's like, me. 
and that's that's pretty discouraging sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, IR Jeeves has a pretty pretty significant question, I think, for you, Locke. Uh, so we said before that some characters are a mid character. Does the game tell you that it's a mid character, or do you just have to figure that out on your own? Um, well, basically, it's mostly a figure it out on your own type of deal. But um, also, Riot has been releasing a lot of like champion spotlights for the new champions, and they've been doing that for a while. And usually, they suggest what role to go in with those champions. And those are just videos you can find on their YouTube channel and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's like when you're in when you're in queue. Usually, if you're with a pretty good group of people, they'll they'll tell you like you know, um, maybe like maybe try this champion if you're gonna play this role or whatever. Um, but sometimes you just get trolls and that stinks. But yeah, it's part of the game. It's part, it's of, part the of the game. internet. <laughs> yeah, this is this is where we live. <laughs> Locke, you know, before you were talking about, like, the, the really good, like, sort of judgment and reporting system that Riot has set up for dealing with, you know, with, with internet trolls. <laughs> dealing with ticks. The, the inevitable, the inevitable, like, crapheads that cause trouble when you're playing a game with strangers just always happens. Is there a system in place for, you know, praising people? Uh, me. yes, there okay. is. This is somebody that I've played with, and they were really great, and I think that they should be lauded for the fact that they hey, have Jess, can you come over here? Yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming. We have no wards in here, this is terrifying. Um, sorry, I was killing people. Uh, so, after every game, you can choose to, like, honor somebody, or... I give them like a friendly token and then if they get enough then they just get like a little icon near their border every time you get into a game. That's pretty much it. And then also you can see how many you've got on your profile. Oh, that's gr so there's there is a system for being like this person is trustworthy. Right. Yeah, at the end of the game you can you can be like this this person was great. Or whatever. Jess, how many tokens do you have by your name? Oh god, like none, are you kidding? I don't know. <laughs> I'm level six, Anthony, don't judge me. <laughs> I think I will. I think I'll I think I'll go ahead and do that myself. Yeah. Okay, I'll... I'm not gonna take this bot lane by myself. I'm just gonna go back. So yeah, Locke, you know, we have we have you two, we have your perspective on how this match is going. But are you you know, are the people that you're playing with doing their jobs well? Uh, yeah, no one's excessively dying, so that's always nice. I don't think, yeah, our team hasn't even died yet, so. It's team hasn't good. died yet. How? Surprising, actually. So, how, how oh, do someone's you. Someone's about to die. Oh, somebody's about to die. So, how. What, what do you have to sort of keep an eye out for? What are things that people you're playing with might start doing or might not be doing enough? that, you know, you really need to sort of keep an eye out at the beginning of a match to make sure that they're doing. And if they're not doing those things, how do you go about fixing that situation? Um, if I was just starting out, then I wouldn't worry about what other people are doing, because chances are they're, like, new too, and then you'll just start arguing for no reason. But, uh, after a certain point, like, pretty much everyone agrees on what to do, so... Uh, I'm not sure. It's just how it is, I guess. Like, there's a standard way to play, and most once you're 30, like a lot of people know what it is. Does that answer your question? It does. So Johan yeah. just asked, uh, more of a general question: Is Training Day going to only be about League of Legends? Uh, Johan, uh, for now, we are only going to be doing League of Legends on Training Day, uh, and right now we're doing it every other week. Though as time goes on, we're going to start doing it every week, and we're going to do series on lots of different games. Locke is our our debut training day host. Uh, I play other know, games too. <laughs> he, play, he plays many other games. He plays one very significant game that is going to be launching at the beginning of June uh, that we already discussed, and I'm angry at myself for using the word launch because I hate it in this context. Why the hell do we insist on using this bullshit PR word? No human being talks about when games launch. That is PR 
Nonsense. Well, you know why? Because saying something releases is weird. That it's, sounds weird. It's, to it's, me. it's when the game is out. It's when it's oh. out. It's out. Comes yeah. out. Yeah, See, when, but then when that's the also like out. too easy. Like, it's, no. So many jokes. Out. When, I, I, I don't know. When the game is ready. You know, it's made its its decisions and it's comfortable with itself, and you know, it's it's ready to come out. The game will come out. It's uh, true. This happened. But yeah, we're we're gonna do Heroes of the Storm eventually. We're gonna do Dota. We're gonna do Street Fighter. We're even gonna go as old school as we possibly can. We're gonna do Counter Strike, uh, which I I am fascinated by because Counter Strike is just one of those things that I have just never ever had any interest in trying. I just like yeah. you know, the the barrier to entry just seems so 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 high, uh, yeah. and just like ugh. well, any first person shooter, it's like I can't I can't play Call of Duty like I just because anytime I try, there's so many people that are just way better than me, nope. and it, I just get discouraged. And, hey, hey, it's something, I, 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 yeah, lock. Uh, so man, you know, while we're on the subject of other games, just very briefly, how what have you you know? thought of Mortal Kombat X. We were we were talking about the fact that it was just going to come out the last episode, and I know you're a fighting game guy. How'd that game treat you, man? Um, well, Netcode sucks, which is super <laughs> unfortunate, because I'm going to EVO. I'm trying to practice in the oh, are you? Nice, nice, yeah. Uh, once, yeah, I'm going to get killers. Oh, just kidding. Um, so, MKX is pretty fun. Uh, it solves a lot of issues from Injustice and MK9, which is nice. Um, but yeah, the netcode really blows. It's really sad, because especially since it's like the first next-gen fighter besides Killer Instinct, and then like the netcode sucks, and the PC release was like awful. <laughs> and then, but the game's oh, man, good. I, I have heard that the PC release... Yeah, I was trying to play, so basically the first day it was like, a crap fest, like you can't even play pretty much, it like crashes every everything you do. Can't even change your video settings without it crashing. And then <laughs> they released the patch and then I start my friend told me to try it with him online. And then every two matches we had, like they were really laggy and then Oof. we also like DC'd every two matches, <laughs> it was terrible. But besides that, like the gameplay is really nice, I think. Um Nothing seems blatantly broken besides like the glitches that are in the game right now, and then the variation system is pretty cool. I re yeah, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. I've seen I've seen some people say, you know, like this is something about that's that's so intimidating to me about League of Legends. And Jess, you touched on this before, and Locke, you were touching on it when you were talking about you know when you when you first start playing. And there are the selection of champions that are there that are free, and then there are the ones that you can buy. And, I, you know, I've seen some people say, like, oh, well, it's a bummer that Mortal Kombat X has fewer characters than MK9 did right out the gate. And, hey, I think MKX has a lot of characters. I think a lot! Of, it has yeah. a ton yeah. of characters! And, like, so I, I think it's, I think it's, so it has 29 characters, just right out of the box. Like, and there's gonna be like that, four DLC or something like that? Four DLC characters. And but like, I, I think MK9 had, I want to say 33 out of the box, but with all the variations, you know, like those are very, very different versions of those characters. And it's ridiculous to sit there and be like, oh, there's not enough variety. At the same time, I actually think that not having like an overwhelming choice can just back out, Jess. Oops, 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 oops. That's okay. Oh no. Very heal. That didn't work. I'm the worst. You're dead. I I died by the turret. I didn't pay attention. I was getting hit. Jess, you're not doing your job. There's you're so not, much to pay attention you're to, not, man. You're not gonna get those tokens if you keep dying like that. Yeah, it's those. It's not those, gonna happen. Like Peter Piper pizza. <laughs> so Locke, what did Jess do wrong? I mean, obviously Everything. she should have backed out quicker, but. You know, if she was in a similar situation going forward, what, how would, she, how should she have approached that situation differently? So basically, when you're under a tower in this game, if you hit a, like if you're in their tower's range and you hit a champion, like the enemy champion, then the tower will start hitting you instead of hitting the creeps. Because first it hits creeps, right? It'll never hit you if there's a creep 
in range first. But if you hit it, there anyone on their team, like then the tower will start hitting you, and the tower starts doing more damage the more times it hits you. So you should try to back out unless you're tanking it on purpose, like getting hit by it on purpose. So the short version is Jess is don't you get should hit by a turret. Yeah. Don't get hit by that turret. Number yes. one, Jess, don't get hit by that turret. Huh? I, I'm learning that. I'm learning that, especially as a squishy AD character. Misfortune is fairly squishy, especially right now when I have no CS and hardly know how to play. It's okay. I'm about it's to okay. kill them. We're learning together. At least I look good. Hey, hey, it's time to kill him. Go in, go in. Coming in, coming in. Yeah. Lock, this is a, another... Uh, oh, I see, I can't stop. Okay. Another sort of basic thing that I'm not totally clear on if we were talking about... We were talking about it earlier. But Jess, Jess, you were talking about it too, uh, of using characters that use different resources and using mana as a resource uh, as opposed to something else. Now... Maybe I'm getting this wrong, but you you get your mana from if you're using a mana based character, you get mana from killing creeps. Am I? Uh, is that right? Uh, that's only if you have an item that lets you do that. But only otherwise, you, yeah. Okay. Otherwise, you have to just regenerate it over time. So you do, oh, and and does some that improve uh, depending on what character you're using. Yeah, or? different characters regen at different times, and also different characters have. Most characters have like a resource or a way to get it back. Like usually it's their passive ability, and, or some characters like don't. But there's a lot of characters that can, and you can also buy mana potions and stuff that are really cheap. But usually that's why the first item you get on like caster type champions has mana regen, so you can spam your spells more. Got it. Got it. Uh, what? How many different varieties of resources are there? Mm. Well, there's AP and AD. Is that like? Not sure yet. I think he means like resources to use your spells. So yeah, Rengar has none, but he has this thing where every time you hit with a spell, it gives you ferocity, and that makes your next like once you hit five ferocity, your spell is improved. Your next spell that you use. Um, there's char more characters with no resources. There's characters with energy. There's also characters with rage, like Trindamir. So the more he gets hit, and the more you hit them when you're playing him, you get more rage. Oh, all right. So it depends on like how much you're actually getting attacked to build that up. Mm -hmm. All right, I get it. I get it. Uh, Kurosen in the chat asks, "What ward are you using, and how do you decide which ward to use?" Let's start with what wards are. Okay, so wards are these things on the map, like this thing right here, and it gives you vision. It's really important, but as you're starting out as a beginner, it's not. Two, one, one second. Uh oh. Ah. He says, hang on, and he just destroys. <laughs> Give me a second. <laughs> this, we're back to the kicking ass portion of things. He never left that, that place. I need to get there still. But give it time, Jess. I'm working on it. I am yeah, working on it. Give it, it I'm some not time. Just... Uh, uh, so Ooh, shut down. Yeah, so basically wards, you can buy them, they're really cheap. Uh, also, when you start out, well, you can buy a trinket, so there's three trinkets in the game, but we'll get to that later. So, Wards are things that give vision, like this thing on the map. It just gives you vision of the area surrounding it, where you place it. So, it's really good because, one, it gives you sight into brushes, like the little brushes here, and then... Because if someone's hiding in there, you can't see them unless you run into it, or you have vision of it, and usually that's through warding. And also, it's nice to have wards in the river and stuff like this, so you know if one lane is leaving to gank your lane, you can back off accordingly and stuff like that. Um, to know which ward you use, uh, now you can only have one pink ward down, and that's the one that sees other wards and stealth units, but it has no stealth itself, so it can die. By just hitting it, and it's also permanent. It'll permanently die. No, it'll permanently be there until someone hits it, and other oh. wards expire over time. And out of curiosity, are wards another thing 
that you just you purchase at the beginning of the map for your specific character, or are those a sort of permanent resource that you have uh, that you can buy from Riot? Or so trinkets uh, are free, and you can rotate them out. They just have a cooldown. There's one that drops a word for free, and that's usually what people start with. Got it. So what are you what are you using for a trinket right now, Jess? I have no trinket. Oh, I have a ward? I don't know. Yeah, you I have, have the ward trinket right now. It's the yellow okay, one, and that drops trinket. a one-minute ward. And you can also buy green wards. Oh, wait, one sec. Kill this guy. Okay. Oh, um, oh I'm sorry. So No, it's oh, okay. Yeah. I just killed him. Uh, if you buy a green ward, it costs 75 gold, which is relatively cheap. And you're supposed to buy them throughout the game. Oh, you want this farm? You can take it. I already took most of it. Uh, <laughs> um, so you can just buy them, and they you can only have three down at a time per person, so it's usually like a group effort to drop a lot of wards down. Uh, supports usually drop the most wards down because they buy an item called Sightstone, which is like free wards. Well, after you buy it, you don't have, it replenishes every time you go back, so you don't have to keep buying wards. So another thing, so <clears throat> IR Jeeves had asked to the chat here, uh, so you put the wards in the brush because it hides it, and Dagonar here in the chat said, yeah, that's right, but that pink ward you were talking about, Log, you said it doesn't have any stealth. So if you put it in the bushes to hide it, will people still see it because it doesn't have any stealth? They have to go into the brush. So the thing is, you put wards into brushes so people can't hide in there. Any green ward or trinket ward is already hidden by stealth, so you can put them anywhere, right? Other than like under towers and stuff, because towers see stealth and things like that. But um, otherwise, yeah, you, you want to put them in brushes so you can see people that are hiding in it. Does that make sense? Because you does hide, make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And guess what? Despite my best efforts, we won. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Just it's like, exciting. Just like a bot Yay. game. Just yeah, <laughs> not bad, not bad at all. Just like a bot game. Yeah, no, and that that I you know, so you guys were playing for forty three minutes, uh, or give or take a few minutes because we were waiting for Jess to pay for her irredeemable crime mm -hmm. of dropping out of the queue. Um, of course, it was redeemable. You you only had to wait for five minutes. It was totally yeah, redeemable. Yeah. It was utterly redeemable in yeah. every way. <laughs> totally <laughs> redeemable. Totally redeemed. We're done. Uh, but yeah, like still like this is like about a 40 minute match, which it was I 23. Say 23, 23 minutes. minutes. All right. Wow. It uh, says right that, here. Uh, yeah. So even then that's comparable to the length of, like you said, like just like a bot match. Cause we played about four bot matches on the last episode. Yeah. So is this, is this unusual? Uh, the average game is like 33 minutes, I think. 33 mm -hmm. minutes. I think that's a right statistic. Uh, can I go over the scoreboard here at the end? Yeah, yeah, okay, please so do. Basically, you know, the scoreboard's pretty standard. You got your name, kills, deaths, uh, items, and gold. But this is like the stuff we were talking about earlier, right? So you can add somebody as a friend if you want. You can also send them a gift, which I don't think anyone has ever used <laughs> through here and then you can honor them like we were talking about like if they're nice you can give them friendly helpful or teamwork and then also if they're being a dick which is the feature you're going to use the most out of this game is you can press a little <laughs> exclamation point and then there's all these options to report them and then yeah once they if you like if they talk a lot of trash you can report them for verbal abuse which is somewhere here right there and then you can like type whatever and then it'll be sent to the tribunal and then if a lot of people agree or like a lot of people report him too then he'll his chat messages will get restricted for like 30 games huh yeah interesting interesting mm -hmm. uh so luck you know you and i talked a lot about the differences between league of legends and the other big moba dota 2 on the last episode now, I know that Dota 2 has a very different system for reporting who is and who is not being a dick, right? Uh, yeah. It's... Yeah, there's a lot of dicks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but how does it work? How is it different? 
Uh, what do you mean? Can you say that again? Sorry. Uh, how how is Dota 2's system for reporting problem players and rewarding good players who are inviting to newbies and uh, all that sort of thing? Uh, how how are the two systems different for reporting bad players and rewarding good players? Uh, in league. Yeah, but well, league compared to Dota 2. Um, in Dota 2, I just know you can like report people, and then it tells you if. Valve took action against them, which is always nice if to see that your report's actually going anywhere. And then in League, I think you know, you don't really get well, you get IP and stuff if you do the tribunal, but it's really, like, negligible. I don't think you get really rewarded for it, but it's just, like, people want to keep the game clean because a lot of people are bothered with dicks in the game because there's a lot mm. of them. Um, dicks, dicks, dicks. Reporting people, I think Riot handles it decently, I guess. I mean, obviously the system's not perfect because there's a million dicks out there still. So, so. Right, right, right. But, like, I mean, like, it, it, that's, it, it's impossible to stop it completely, right? Like, you're never, ever, ever going to make a competitive, you know, a competitive game of any type that's open to everybody online and most importantly is free where you're not going to have some, like, very, very aggressive people out there. But, like, you know, on the whole, if somebody was going to come in and play one of these games for the very first time, and they were going to pick, which would you say is more inviting to a newbie? Um, which game? Yeah. Definitely League. Um, yeah, definitely League. I'm not sure, but oh, I heard Dota 2 has a really good tutorial system now, but uh, I never played it. But um, also, Dota 2 is just a much harder game to play in general, so a lot of people flame you more for like screwing up and doing stuff that's not supposed to be done. And also, uh, I think a League's introductory system is pretty good. The first 10 levels, you only play with people that are level 10 or below, so... Got it. It's pretty nice. So is Dota like super hard? Is it, is it harder than League? I'd say Dota is a lot harder than... Oh, mechanically it's a lot harder. Um, really? The thing about League is, like, it's more... I don't know. You can't really say it's more team... Yeah, I just think Dota's harder. There's no real way to sugarcoat it and since yeah. I played both, and that's just my opinion. Uh, there's okay. just, like, harder mechanics. It's more punishing when you die and stuff like that. Huh. Because I've never really watched Dota. I mean, obviously, I like League, but Dota is a is an unknown beast to me still. Yeah. Dota is a pretty difficult game. Like, uh... You know how you last hit creeps in this game? Like, you can mm -hmm. deny your own so they can't get yours. Oh, yeah, you can... Oh, pretty, wow. Yeah, okay. it's pretty complicated. That's rough, yeah. How about a magic dun, 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 dun. Block, have you picked a different champion this time? I am picking a different champion. I'm going to play Shaka. He's like... Ooh, yeah. The Joker. He's a dick. <laughs> He's cool to watch, though. And so, what what is what is what is the primary difference between the champion that you're playing now compared to the last round? What are what are the benefits of each? What is going to be very different about the flow? Is this Joker sort of guy uh, also good for jungling? Is that uh, yeah, he's at? a jungler too. So I just let everyone pick their role, and then I was filled. Because I'm not a dick, and it's just <laughs> low-level game, so Appreciate it's whatever. It. Um, so basically, what you're gonna see from Shaq compared to Rengar is like a lot more early game pressure. So there's some champions where they're really strong early game, and they like fall off late game because like that's how their spells work. Like their spells don't scale very well, or like they're not good in team fights and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so Shaq, yeah, he's pretty much front-loaded completely. Once he's in the late game, like he can't even team fight unless he's massively fed, and even then he dies really quick. So, yeah, you're gonna see a lot of ganks because he has a really good stealth move that allows him to do some pretty good early game ganks, and he does a lot of damage. So it's always nice. Like he goes invisible and stuff. Right? Yeah, he like ports anywhere in like a certain range. It's like flash, but it stealths him too, so you don't see where he is. Cool. And I picked Nautilus. And yeah, hopefully I, I was, he will I was about keep to, me safe. I was about to ask, Jess, what's the deal with Nautilus? 
So I'm going to support this time. So we got my boyfriend, Anthony, is on uh, ADC. He's playing Jinx. Oh, beautiful. All right. Yeah. So I'm going to I'm gonna support. I've never played Nautilus. Let's see how this goes. But he's tanky, tankier than anything I've been playing. So that's good. I'll be able to survive longer, hopefully. Anthony, welcome aboard. Hi. He says, hi. <laughs> we heard him. <laughs> <laughs> Just... Jesse he sounds like a terrifying robot when he... When, oh, yeah. Like, that was amazing. Aww. Yeah, I built a robot, and I call him my boyfriend. <laughs> See, you're making a lot of money off of that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm keeping it for myself for yeah. now. Yeah. We'll wait till I get sick of him. We're all, we're all in the wrong business here. Let's, let's <laughs> start making robot lovers. You heard it here first, everybody. It's a training day exclusive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Locke, who are these? Who are these guys you are facing off against? Describe some of these characters for me. Uh, going against or playing with? Playing against. Uh, so we have. Uh, let me. We have a Riven, a Nunu, a Caitlyn, a Vladimir, and a Nasus. So their comp is kind of weird. Mm -hmm. Um. Why would you say that? Because their jungler is Nasus when it should be Nunu and Nasus going top. That's just like the standard uh, setup for now. Uh, right now in the meta game, the meta game is like what people play, like the expected roles of every champion and stuff like that, and where you expect mm. them to go. And then, yeah, they just have a mix. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, they have a few tanky characters and a few casters. You know, it's pretty standard, but their roles are kind of weird. So what what are you doing? What are your first steps that you're taking here? Uh, so as a jungler, like you want to be ready to do your camp. So you want to make sure you watch for people to not run in and kill you while you're doing it. So dropping a ward and stuff, and also jacking the boxes. Is Shaco's spell. You can set them up, and they're like traps. So you want to... It lasts one minute, and the, the minions spawn... Well, the jungle monsters spawn at 155. So you just wait. You drop it at 55 seconds. So, you know, it'll last a minute, and then when it spawns, it'll attack him. And then basically it just kills the buff really quick because you have so many traps, as you'll see right here. Oh, I was on the wrong side. Sorry. That's okay. Don't worry about over it. Here. Jinx got you. Okay. And Anthony's, I was at all my sales. Anthony's rolling around with his dragon-faced gun. Yeah, Jinx is one of my favorite characters, too. She's really fun. She's just, like, trigger-happy and wonderful. And I am Nautilus. Jess, there, there, there is a request here uh, hmm. from Johanan. Please show the Nautilus dance and swim. Please. How do I dance? Control 3. What is it? Control three. Control three. Yeah. <laughs> okay. When I when I have a free moment, I will control three and shake my groove thing for you. Is there a single game out there right now that doesn't have a dance maneuver? I'm pretty sure Bloodborne has a dance button at this point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Demon Souls had a dance. They had emotes too. <laughs> uh, Locke, for somebody that is coming in and playing League of Legends for the very first time. Oh! Uh, well, Wolfman, I just tell Alec to hit, w to last hit well. <laughs> so that's one of Alec's uh, team members. <laughs> that's Wolf. And what is last hitting, and how do you do it well? Here, Locke, you go ahead and do that. So, um, here, I'll do it when I can move my camera to the lane. It's easier to explain. Give me a sec. Uh, it's so important, especially for last hitting is for like uh, minions, right? So the, you only get gold for killing a min minion, like the last getting the last hit of it. That's where the name comes from. Like you have to be the one that lands the killing blow. You can't just be in the area and get money from it. So basically, you want to time your attacks so you hit, get the last hit, and that's pretty much all that thing is. You just want the money from the creeps, pretty much, and that's done by just killing it, laying the killing blow. Does that make sense? I'm sorry. Yeah, very much so. Okay. And then Jess died. 
and tried to cover up the shame of it by whispering, but we know, Jess. I know, it goes across everyone's screen. We know. Someone we know. was stupid. Someone <laughs> messed up. <laughs> okay. It was it was for a good cause. We know what is taking place right now. Okay. Uh, Locke, you know, you were talking about how the, the people you're playing against are sort of defying the expectations of what role they're supposed to be filling. It's a little, like, they're they're not necessarily doing what their champions are built to do. Now, that's obviously, like, an unusual condition. So if this was somebody's very first match, that would be, that would be you know, creating a sort of different, weird set of expectations for them when they went into their second. Uh, Go ahead. Go ahead. I think... Like I said before, like, you shouldn't be worrying about roles too much as you're first starting because, you know, like, er everyone else you're playing against should be noobs too, so, you know, like, a lot of people, like, don't watch or anything or they don't look up strategies, so a lot of people are just, you know, doing what they want to do, and then it's whatever, and then as you progress, like, you'll see the standard stuff yourself, and then you'll know what to do. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah it does. I wouldn't worry about it too much, you know, just learn how to play the game and, like, move your character and stuff first before you have to worry about rolls too much. So, how... I, well, I mean, where, where I'm sort of building to with this is I'm very curious about what the difference is between playing a game with a bunch of people in a live match and playing with bots. Because obviously the bots are being dictated by AI that's going to make them behave like, you know, like they're supposed to with their roles. And do you think it's way more useful to go in and start playing with actual people who are also learning how to play? Or do you think it's useful to go in and sit there and play with bots? Um, so when I started playing, like, Dota and League, like, bots weren't even a thing. But um, I recommend playing bots because... It's an easy way to like learn the spells for your character. Like you can play like one or two games and play against other people. It doesn't really matter because everyone's a noob still, like we said. And then, but uh, also playing against bots is nice because as a new player, like getting trash talked would be pretty, you know, discouraging. So um, mm -hmm. playing against bots reduces that chance in half, right, or more because you're playing against bots, right? But a lot of people get upset if you start losing to bots, but you know, it's whatever. They can do whatever they want. But, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, half the people are in the game, so you're not going to get trash locked as much, I hope. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. I think bots are good to learn your character and a good way to start playing the game. Uh, if you're scared of, you know, if you are sensitive to words on the internet, I would suggest playing bots first because people can be pretty mean, like, starting off in these games. XBL XBLA fans, welcome to you as oh, well. Oh, that's John. And... Hi, John. Hello, John. Uh, Hi, again. <laughs> and... Bite Beam? Is that... No, that is a spammer. Get out of here, Bite Beam. Get out of here, spammer. <laughs> See you later. Enjoy your banning. Oh, I killed someone? Cool. Good for me. <laughs> Uh, Johanan has asked a question. I know we covered this last time, but I, th I, I it is always worth going oh, over God. some of the jargon. Uh, Johanan wants to know, what are Smurfs? Uh, so oh. Smurfs are people... Like, if I... Okay, so if I wanted to be a Smurf, right, I could just make a new account and then start playing it, and obviously I would, like, smash everybody. Because they're, like, complete... Most of the people are, like, complete noobs, right? Because we... They they call it newbie island. So like once level one through ten, <laughs> you will never play anyone above level ten unless you queue with somebody higher than level ten. So um, if I made a new account, I would be smurfing because that's just like not fair, right? That's that's just the term people use. All right, I get it. I understand. Yeah. So this this is my smurf clearly. Oh wait, and then <laughs> twenty nine A is talking about twinks. Are twinks a thing in League of Legends? No. Wait, what? There's no yeah. gear, so there's no twinking. What? All right, could you say that again, Locke? Uh, well, catch. like, there's no like, no, you can't twink because it just doesn't make sense, right? Like, twinking is like 
decking out something that's low level, so it doesn't really make sense. Like, there's no items. Like, in WoW, you can twink, because if you're, like, level 19, and you want to play in, like, level 19 Battlegrounds, and you get the best items for level 19, that's twinking, but, like, you can't really... You can't do that in this game, right? Like, you always start at level 1, so... Yeah. Jess, are you as confused by the revelation that there is another meaning for twink? Absolutely. Because <laughs> that's what I use to describe Alex it's, usually. This is this is blowing my mind that there is another there is yeah. Wow. I think we should alert alert the presses or something. Yeah, well, it's if only we knew someone in the news. <laughs> <laughs> right after the stream, everybody, we gotta get a post up. Breaking! <laughs> breaking breaking news. There are two uses for twink. The day I learned, yeah. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to stop dying now. That's my uh, my goal. That's good Don't even want to kill anyone. I just want to not die. <laughs> Sounds good. Locke, how is the match going at this point? It's going more even compared to the last game. Like uh, yeah. our teammates are dying in every lane, and last game was like a domination. So. We'll yeah. see. Yeah. Johanna does ask a good question about, you know, the nature of Twinks and, and their potential to exist in League of Legends. Is it possible to have high-level runes on a low-level account? That's a Probably good not. question. Uh, so basically, no, because Tier 3 runes you can only use after you're level 20. And also, the only way to get IP is by playing, and you can't mm. stop your EXP growth in this game. So, it's just... Yeah, this is impossible. Uh, I didn't mean to go in that far. It just happened. I didn't mean to. That's okay. Uh, remember how I said I was going to stop dying? All lies. Just yeah. all lies. You're after this I death, right? I did say right? I'd try. <laughs> Does rum help play League of Legends? I feel like I should have rum. I don't know. <laughs> well, you're not you're not a pinup pirate lady this time. That's true. Not yeah. right now. Now oh. I'm a deep sea captain, which is oh my yay! Yeah. A diver, diver guy. I'm right? not gonna say it's totally out of bounds. I, I'd say that it's wouldn't. It would be reasonable to pour yourself a glass of rum, Jess. Okay, okay, good to know. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are an hour in into today's episode of Training Day. And uh, thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Anthony John Agnello, producer here at Engadget Streams, uh, JXE Streams, as we are sometimes colloquially known. Uh, Locke Tran of San Jose State University is teaching us right now how to play your basic League of Legends match. How to get in, how to meet up with people, how to you know, pick your first champion, and what you need to know. And playing with him is none other than senior reporter from Engadget, uh, Jess Condit. And uh, they are mid-match right now, uh, acquitting themselves fairly well, although it's uh, not abundantly clear who is going to come out on top this time around. This is a rougher game for me, guys. Pretty rough. Now, would you guys say that it's a rougher game because the other, like, the team that you are facing off against are that good? Or, you know... Well, they should be better minions. because... Do um, I don't want to die to minions! Her boyfriend's level 30, so it's matching us more with level 30s. Oh, alright, so you're, you're, you're dealing with some more uh, advanced players compared to last time. Yeah. Yeah, everyone in our chat is like, oh wow, we're playing with a championship level player. Because they saw um, Locke's like, uh, ranking in the, in the matchup. That's so cool. Everyone's very in awe of your powers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you don't play many games with people that are like under 30, so... Eh, I doubt sometimes. you get that all the time. Oh yeah? Sometimes? Yeah. Real just, for and stuff. Just, for, just for kicks? No. Yeah, kick it with the peasants. No, no smurf arenas for me. Yeah. <laughs> should I buy? Oh man. Okay, I'm gonna get uh, tangled. As a support, you should buy a relic shield. Well, you should buy normal boots first. That'd buy boots? Good. Yeah. Well, this is another thing that we've covered before, but 
Can you walk me through gold? Like, how much gold do you have at the beginning of a match? What is the average cost of things that you need to purchase for your character throughout a match to make sure that you can actually freaking win? Like, so, the money in this to me. Okay, um... You start with 475, and then... You can... So, items are, like, you buy components, and then they combine to make a, a better item. Does that make sense? Like, you buy the parts of it. And then, once you buy enough parts, you can pay to like, combine them, and then usually they have, like, a special effect and stuff. So basically, a basic part is like the long sword here, and this is all it builds into, as you can see at the top, which is really nice in the interface. So you don't have to like scroll through the shop and stuff. Mm. Um, so yeah, so you just I know what I want to so buying that, and then once I buy all these parts, I can pay whatever it costs, like a few hundred, and then you can upgrade it into this, and then you get all these like abilities from the item. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. It does every different champion have that many different thing, like different items and item parts that they're going to be looking at? Um, uh, go into the shop, or do some have fewer? Do some have even more? So everyone's can access the same amount of items, other than the jungler items. Uh, but you don't have to worry about that. It's starting out. Um, so basically, the items you buy are usually based on the rolls. So you know, like. As an AD, there's a few like damage items you can buy, but there's a lot of items you don't buy. So you either choose it based on the champion, like some champions are better with attack speed, and some champions are just better with flat out damage, so you buy a damage item first and stuff like that. But uh, usually the builds don't vary too much, especially from game to game. Mm. Uh, if anybody can hear a bizarre tinkling uh, melody in the background, that is not the music from League of Legends. There is an ice cream truck outside the window of <laughs> my apartment. And what are you is... going to get? Chocolate ice cream? Nilla? What you... What's up? Creamsicles, Jess! Creamsicles for days. It's a good yeah. choice. This is exact, it's exactly how it's going to go. I'm just going to go down there. I'm going to be like... Oh, oh god. Watch. That was a lot of damage. She oh, what happened? Strong. I died. Can I flash? I don't have flash. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I can't learn strong. I'm not level 30. I think flash is 13 or something. Is it? Well, yeah. I'm not level 13. Close. <laughs> what there. is flash? Uh, so basically every game, no matter what champion you're playing, you can choose summoner spells, right? So those are two spells that you can have, you just pick before the game starts. And junglers take smite. And usually everyone else takes Flash because Flash is like the best spell. Like, there's no reason not to take Flash usually, unless you're champion. You use Ghost, which is like a sprint. But flashing is like a little teleport. Like, it goes from yeah, it's like yeah, it's like a blink for people who know from other games. Uh, it's like a short distance teleport that you can use, and it has a five minute cooldown. Mm -hmm. So like I could have hopped over a wall to get me out of that maybe instead of just mm -hmm. getting all destroyed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So flash is really good because it lets you go over walls, like she said. Oh well. Smelly tunic. The ice trick. Ice cream truck by me plays a creepy version of Oh Holy Night. That is oh, God. messed up. What? It's... That doesn't make me want ice cream. Is that an ice cream white that, yeah. van with no windows? <laughs> we have a creepy ice cream truck out here too. Like, what is that? Can you really just buy a van and start selling ice cream out of it? Is that a thing? I don't think that's a thing. I don't, I don't think I, so either. I, but I, I feel like I hope that's it. not a thing. <laughs> I think. <laughs> like, uh -oh. <laughs> yes, I'm pretty sure that you need a license to sell food products. I I would think so, but I'm not sure. <laughs> There's dicks on the internet, and there's dicks in real life, to too. <laughs> <laughs> as, as with League of Legends, everybody, if you're going to sell ice cream out of a truck, don't rule be a number dick. one is don't be a dick. The only time when that oops, rule oops, doesn't oops, exist oops, 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 oops. is when you're trying to, to be a dick. This happened. Jess, are you going to die again? No. She said she's not going to die anymore, I believe her. I didn't die, I didn't die. I just used a spell I didn't want to, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's rule two. Is that rule number two of League of Legends, don't die. 
Yeah, that's a good that's roll. One yeah. <laughs> I'd say it's roll fired. one, but know. you know, yeah. being a dick is pretty bad. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, d don't be a dick is a good rule number one. Yeah. yeah. I think that's definitely a big one. Oh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, another thing, if you are joining us and you have never joined one of our streams before, we do encourage you to click on that delightful little heart at the bottom of the screen and follow us. And uh, you can fo also follow uh, Locke here on yes, Twitch. Sir. And um, Locke, remind me again, your Twitch handle is... LockTran, L-O-L. Locktran L O L. It's not as funny as it sounds. <laughs> and that stands for lots of love. Not League of Legends. Not laugh out loud. If you follow my channel, I give you lots of love. Unless you can't follow <laughs> rule one. <laughs> Unless you can't <laughs> follow rule one. Rule two is optional. Yeah. You can <laughs> die, just don't be a dick. That's true. I don't know what I'm building. Oh, oh well, that's fine. It's the TK says dying is okay overall. It's feeding that's bad. That's ah. true. That's what I'm doing. Just okay. stop feeding. I'm hungry. Wait. What, what is feeding? <laughs> this is when people what people say if you like excessively die because you're like feeding them gold. Does that yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Uh, you know, man. I swear to God, luck is as. Much as you have talked about strategy and the basics of play in League of Legends, I feel like the first two episodes of Training Day have been defined by what the hell does this word mean? What the hell does this word mean? Yeah. That's basically it, though. LCS like, big plays. Okay. What? <laughs> Good, job. <laughs> Good job. Hashtag LCS big plays. Just uh, save fourth meal to the experts. Taco Bell doesn't need the extra competition. You know what? I don't need anyone talking about Taco Bell up in my realm. I'm on my Taco Bell boycott until they bring back lava sauce. This is serious, guys. We all need to be in this together. Wait, they don't have lava sauce anymore? They don't have lava sauce anymore. Yeah. What are they thinking? Hey. Why would I go to Taco Bell if they don't have lava sauce? I'm pretty sure the last time I was at Taco Bell, they were promoting a Star Wars movie. So. Yikes. What? <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Jess, you live in Phoenix. Why would you eat at Taco Bell? Oh, yeah, that's the thing, too. Like, I just there's no reason. I just there's don't no reason. understand. I don't. <laughs> you know really grinds my gears? As a kid, I always wanted Taco Bell. That's like fast food choice. But there's just some Taco Bells that don't have drive throughs oh, So bad. What? Come on. That's the point, man. Yeah, exactly. Come on. Half the Taco Bells in my area like don't even have a drive thru. Ugh. That's terrible. Wow. Terrible. If you're gonna build one of those wretched little buildings, because they are all that Taco Bell building. Yeah. I think it would be standardized. You think? <laughs> End roll twenty nine joystick. Think about all the acronyms in gaming: FPS, MMORPG, ARPG, PVP, PVE, RTS. It is it, JRPG. It is Slow ridiculous. Fun. It is Art like fun. I try. I try to use as few acronyms when writing about games as I possibly can. I try to because talk in like only efficiency. acronyms. In only acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> JK. The, <laughs> the the best acronym. So the very first time in my entire life that I ever heard somebody say LOL out loud. Ew, no one no. No, this was a long time ago. It was 2002 and I was standing outside of a church and I was about to go see Interpol on their first American tour ever. Oh. They were playing in the basement of this church in Philly. And oh, yeah. and I was standing outside, and there are these you know hipster goons standing next to me, and one of them said "lol" out loud and like not ironically, he was just saying it, and just his friends just started laying into him just like Good. viciously, and one of them looked at the other ones and said, "There's only one acronym that I use regu regularly," 
and they're like, what is it? And he goes, N-T-B-U-S-W-A-B. It's a pretty good like, one. They're like, what the hell is that? And he goes, it's an acronym for not to bring up Star Wars again, but... I, I've heard that before. <laughs> That's it's good. Amazing. It is one of the best things. N-T-B-U-S-W-A-B. Oh, I love that. I had to pat him on the back. Complete stranger. <laughs> Tunic, yes. It, well, Smelly Tunic spotted it in one. That show was supposed to be at the first Unitarian Church in Philadelphia, but the basement there was flooded, and so it was moved to this other church up on Penn's campus. That was a killer show. It was, uh, it was uh, Interpol and Moom, this uh, electronic Icelandic band, who I don't know if they're together anymore. Because I'm old. So Locke, break us down. How how did that match end? Uh, so Locke basically, once it's after 20 minutes, a team can choose to type slash forfeit or slash ff, and then oh, they if, fail. Yeah, if four people yeah, vote yes, then the game ends. You guys won by default. We both. We it's pretty both standard. Yeah. What standard. what do you what do you do? Like, is there is that is that cool? Like, you just said that's standard. Is that a, like that's not like that's not lame? Uh, a lot of people on the American scene like just give up when the lead is really huge. Well, our lead is like really big. Like, you can come back from that, but these guys aren't going to be able to, especially since they're unorganized. So a lot of people are just like giving up and get, moving on to the next game instead of like dying over and over. So it would not be good etiquette to be like to give them a bad rating to report them for forfeiting. No, that's a pretty no, standard. No. Yeah. Well, everybody, that is two matches today, and I feel I feel like we have a pretty good overview of how to actually go in there and play this game. Yeah. Jess, I asked you at the top of this uh, stream today if you felt more confident playing League of Legends. You said absolutely not. How about now? Nope. <laughs> it takes a lot I've of games to be uh, comfortable. Yeah, I've learned Nautilus is not my champion, that's for sure. Not your champion. But otherwise, uh, I'm still working on it. I will find my champion, and it will be glorious. Your boyfriend's slacking. Why didn't he tell you what to buy? <laughs> I know. Well, he's sitting there playing his own champion. Uh, whatever. Uh. <laughs> Locke, uh, what is your final advice? To anybody who's about to sit down and get into League of Legends and play their first match, what should they be thinking as they sign into the client and start picking out their champion? Um, I think the best way to process it would be first look at the champions. All right, here we'll go through it. Go to your profile, go to champions, and then you sort by available. And then the ones with the exclamation points will, are, well, those are the only ones you're going to see because those are the free ones. Yeah, you just pick one that looks cool, and then if you're one of those people who like to, you know, research before you play, there's a. I wouldn't recommend it yet if you're like completely new, because you won't even know the items that they're telling you to buy. So it's whatever. You can just use the recommended. Just you know, click on a hero, then you click, you read the abilities, and you also press abilities here. You can watch like what they do if you want to see what a champion does, and then you know, go in a bot game. Or if you're playing with your friends, you know, you can just go into a game with them and hopefully they'll teach you how to play. But uh, the bot games are good because you can just learn how to, like, aim your spells and stuff like that. And also it's less discouraging. And it's easier to win, which is always nice. You know, winning is always nice. Uh, no one likes losing, I think. <laughs> and then, um, you know, press play. Choose your mode. Should be normal blind pick as a starter. Or you can do call versus AI, like we said. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, just make sure that, you know, you're not going to get better by not playing. So, mm. you know, just hang in there. It's a hard game to learn. Getting on the 30, like, once you're level 30, you're still considered a noob, right? So, you know, and that level 30 is like 120 games. So it takes takes a long time to learn this game. But once you learn it, um, I'd say it's like a... A mountain, I guess. Once you go up, yeah. then like, then you're up. Yeah, then you're up. And then, you, then it's pretty much easy to learn everything else, like champions and stuff. You know, you pick up new champions really quick. Like, if you think about it, 
it's only it's really only like four spells, right? Four spells plus right. a passive, so there's not much to learn. Of, like the t it doesn't take a lot of effort to learn the basic champions once you know how to play a few. Does that mm. make sense? Yeah. Totally. Totally. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for coming out for our second episode. We will be back with our third in two weeks. In the meantime, come back here on Tuesday. We're going to have Mike Still, the artistic director of the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater, coming to hang out with us. We're going to play Mario Kart 8. We're going to play all that DLC. I'm going to hop on my Animal Crossing moped, and I'm just going to just blow past Jess. It's going to be awesome. 200cc is so hard. I, I, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. It's yeah. going to be awesome. Be here on Tuesday for that. On uh, Thursday, we're going to be hanging out with Acid Nerve, the studio behind Titan Souls, Woo! that delightfully, deliciously, brutally difficult 2D game that just hit PlayStation 4 in the past couple of weeks. We'll be playing that, so get ready. Follow us if you haven't, and we will see you then. Bring us out, Locke! Alright guys, uh, you can follow me on the Twitch and the Twitters. Uh, Twitch is Locktran, LOL, and then Twitter is at LPandasaurus. Spelled as it sounds, it's the letter L, not the Spanish L. <laughs> and then also, uh, thanks for watching, and... Just keep, just keep going at it if you want to learn how to play the game. It's, it seems pretty hard at first, but you know, you'll get the hang of it over time. Bye-bye, everyone. Peace. Peace out.